But um, let's meet our special guest of the morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's actor Stephen Mayen. <laughs> we, were just, we were just saying before we came on. I think last time you were here, you were bearded. I yeah, think. I had a big yeah. old beard doing a play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But now it's cool. gone. Yeah, big hairy. It brought me to the brink of divorce. My wife wasn't happy about the beard at all. I prefer you with that. My little I son know. loved it. He'd swing off it, and you know. <laughs> Oh, we got it there. <laughs> yeah, <look at> that. <laughs> now, everyone, of course, knows says Stephen as Greenwing's brash anaesthetist, Dr. Guy Secretan, but he's about to star in a brand new comedy on Channel 4 called Free Agents, which, uh, well, what's, what's it about? Free Agents is a comedy about, I play an agent, a showbiz agent. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Who is going through a divorce, he's got two kids, and he's trying to sleep with his work colleague who's just uh, been bereaved. Nice. It's classic comedy <laughs> subject matter. It's quite dark. It's a sort of will-they-won't-they they, uh, romance, but being Channel 4, we do in the very first scene <laughs> of the series. <laughs> but then it's will-they-won't-they they again, and then we do about 15 minutes later. But, but then and it's will-they-won't-they, they, and then for the rest of the series. Is this, so it is a series? It's a series, yeah. OK. Uh, and uh, did you base the agent on any agents you know? Well, the guy who wrote it was an agent and went through a divorce and had two kids and met his partner uh, at work. So it's slightly based on the writer, basically. OK. Chris Neal, yeah. OK. Nice one. Well, we have a little clip. The first episode kicks off tomorrow night. Have a look at this. I've, I've read that you were very keen, or you felt slightly thwarted that you couldn't get actually involved more in, in, in the creation of this. Is that right? Well, I, you know, I've done a lot of stuff where... Um, been involved in improvising yeah. or helping to write the script. And Sharon Horgan, who, who's in it as well, of course, wrote Pulling and, yeah. and Angelo's. Uh, so we both found it a bit tough that you're just given the words and you have to say them. And that's it? So you, don't, you didn't get a any... Minute. Can't we make up our own stuff? And then we're like, no, we have to... You know, it's good, because the words were great. You know, the script was brilliant, so... Because I've often wondered whether when you get actors together with a script, whether they do sort of add bits in Occasionally whether... you go up and you go, can I change this line? They go, no. And you go, oh, sorry, OK, but right. <laughs> you say you do it the way they, they tell you to do it. So that's it, you know. Fair, well, fair play, I guess. Yeah. Stephen, by the way, of course, has appeared in so many TV and film and stage dramas that I'm told he has trouble keeping tabs on all of them. Uh, you've probably seen him in Confetti, Alan Partridge, Festival, Adrian Mole, Hyperdrive. But is it true that you didn't know you were actually in Billy Elliot the movie, is that right? Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I, I filmed for a day or two uh, on a film called Dancer, which is what it was called then. And then it came out, Billy Elliot came out, and lots of people said, I saw you in Billy Elliot. I said, I'm not in Billy Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I mean, Dancer. It's a very similar film about similar <laughs> young boy from Newcastle. <laughs> I don't know how, two films like that coming out at the same time. <laughs> Extraordinary. Uh, but of course I was, they changed the name. Well, in case you've forgotten, remember this. Up on the box, please. All right, bend over. Right down. And come up. Up, head down, tiny curvature here, head down. How tiny? Might not be a problem. Come on, keep going. Right. <laughs> always, always a doctor. Pretty much my screen debut, that was. <laughs> was it? Yeah, pretty much. First thing I'd ever did. Out yeah. of uh, RADA? Well, well, I did lots of theatre, so yeah. I, was, I didn't want to do TV and film. I wanted to be a proper actor. But, yeah, but uh, then then I didn't you're... earn enough money. So I thought, <laughs> Familiar story. I've had enough of that. Uh, but you, you, is it, you, you've got a law degree, is that right? I have, yeah. yeah. But you didn't fancy... No. I knew about two days into doing that 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 wasn't for me. But I, and in fact, I can't remember... I can remember when the police are allowed to stop and search your car. That's the only thing I can remember from three years of doing law. So if anyone needs to know anything about that, come and see me afterwards. <laughs> forget so, it. I can't remember. So we've got a, a would-be lawyer, we've got a hypnotist, nutritionalist, lividivitist... <laughs> And yeah, have you got any secret skills? Well, I, uh, coincidentally, Stephen, I also uh, embarked on a legal career thinking oh, I was going to be a lawyer. No. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I thought, oh, my God, this is what I'm going to do. I did it mainly to please my parents. That's what I your mother think that's what Oh, yeah, she was like, you have to do law. And, uh, <laughs> and I stopped uh, to do comedy. I did it for, I was doing comedy, but I didn't tell my parents uh, for about six years. And my dad phoned me up one day and he went, Stephen, tell me, surely you have graduated by now. <laughs> and I said, I said, actually, no, Dad, I'm a, com I'm a comedian. And in a weird way, being a lawyer and a comedian, quite similar, because you stand in front of a room full of strangers telling lies. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, one last question, Stephen, one last question. I, I, I've heard again that you're off to Broadway, is that right? Yeah, yeah, we did a play uh, at the Old Vic at the end of last year, Norman Conquest. Oh, God, yeah, you got And we're going to Broadway, yeah. I, I mean, one of the great ambitions I've always had is to go out to New York and do a play there, so... 
So we're going out for four months if they like it. They're very rude. I can't over there. reading the reviews. I mean, they really the were fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if they don't like it over there, we'll be home in about four hours. But uh, <laughs> you know, I well, think... there's a venue near me, Tooting Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> that may be where they're sitting. <laughs> on a minute. Listen, great to have you here. It really is, and great to have you with us this morning. Let's tell you about today's show. It's going to kick off, of course, with the headlines, and Stephen will lead us through those. Nice to know me. Thank you for that. Uh, first, then, let's find out what's making news today. Stephen, what have you got for us? Yeah, I've got a very sad story here. A, a, a couple, they had three sons. Uh, they went to the doctor. The middle one had a very swollen, painful leg. Um, the doctor said that he had six tiny little fractures on his leg that could only have been caused by physical abuse. The council <laughs> stepped in, took away all three children, put them up for adoption, and they were adopted. The doctors later worked out that the fractures on the leg were actually being caused by scurvy which are very rare conditions, lack of vitamin C. Apparently, the family GP had recommended that the kids were fed on soya milk, which doesn't have enough vitamin C, you know, that an ordinary milk has. So the couple said, well, OK, so it, as we said all along, it wasn't our fault, these fractures. Can we please have our three children back? And the judge has just ruled that, no, they can't, because they've already been put up for adoption, they're settled in another family. Uh, and I think that's uh, what a sad story. Outrageous. Yeah. They, I believe they were adopted within six months of, of being taken Apparently into care. very quick, yeah. You'd think they'd be fostered for a while. I mean, they were just... Well, I actually imagine they were for they six were fostered months. Very, that's nothing, yeah, six months. Three, three to four months, and then they were, that's right, they were gone. So, you know, how sad is that? Do we... Do we... I mean, the, the, uh, the main argument for not giving them back seems to be that they're settled. Mm. Is that a good enough reason uh, to keep them away from their real parents? Well, unfortunately, um, the law is framed it's always the needs of the children, not yeah. the needs of the adults. And yeah. if, they, so if they say the children would be more traumatised by being moved again, then that's what the court will decide. Which, which they may have a point about that, but how heartbreaking well, let's, let's, let's give it. I can give you a personal example. So my mum was adopted uh, during the war. Uh, her real mother tried to get her back. The courts refused. My mother has spent the rest of her life trying to find out who her real mother is. I wouldn't have said that worked out particularly well for the child. And that's just you know, an example I can give off the top of my head. It's a but, worry. But do the, uh, do the real parents have any contact? No. No, no contact at all. That's outrageous. And even had another child, and they were, the, 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 the county council wanted to take that child away from there to flee to Ireland. But now, obviously, they've been cleared. They're OK. They can move the back to is, the UK. Though, you see, I'm then sitting here thinking, it wasn't that long ago. Just a couple of months ago, we were talking about baby P, horrific injuries, yeah, social true. services not getting involved thoroughly enough. And it just, I mean, yeah, social workers, the worst job in the world. Damned if you do, damned yeah. if you don't. Yeah. It just shows how thorough you need to be. Uh, and scurvy is not a particularly common but it also shows, syndrome. No, it so. also shows how much power doctors have when it comes to mm. expert evidence, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Good point. Good point. OK, uh, that story's sure to develop. Uh, anything else? Yes, uh, a million Britons pull their own teeth out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is not... You're not going to give us the methods, though, this are is you? Not, well, apparently, oh, string right. tied to doorknobs, which I thought was a sort of Laurel and Hardy kind of... Uh, <laughs> but not only that, nearly a million people whiten their teeth with household cleaning products. Oh. <laughs> I tried it, but I used fairy liquid. It's didn't just, work. It's just people who read the Daily Star. It's not actually normal people. I, I just... I, pliers oh, God, or dear. fixing crowns with household glue. Oh, I can see that. Yeah. It's cheaper than going to the dentist. It's sticking glue. down loose fillings with chewing gum. Oh. It's not going to work, is it? <laughs> no, no I, I do actually have a, a fear of going to the dentist, but the idea of sitting in my house, <laughs> tying a bit of string, <laughs> closing my eyes and going, no! <laughs> no, <Okay>. no, no. <laughs> Anyone in the audience ever done home dentistry? Eric, yeah. you've done home dentistry. <gasps> Why doesn't that surprise me? <laughs> I tied a bit of string to the door when I had a really wobbly tooth when I was about five, so I tied it to my tooth, tied it to the doorknob, and it just kept on wobbling and wobbling. It just wouldn't come out, so I went slam, and it came out, and it didn't hurt at all. So, it's true. <laughs> don't try that one at home, folks. No, don't. Uh, well, OK, home dentistry is all the rage. Anything else, Stephen? Right, Cam the Tories and the Labour Party having a fight about something. Uh, uh, George... Not, what's his name? Oswald? No. Bush? Gordon Brown, it was. Oh, Gordon yeah. Brown. I should have read this first, shouldn't I? <laughs> Gordon Brown said in PM Question Time yesterday, he said, the world leaders are finally getting to grips with the cash crisis. It's a bit like Titian when he was 90, saying, I'm finally learning to paint. Right. David Cameron leapt up and said, <laughs> Titian died at 86, you fool. How could he have said that when he was 90? They looked on Wikipedia as soon as they left uh, Prime Minister Question Times, and in fact, no one really knows when Titian died. So some Tory researcher changed the Wikipedia entry so that David Cameron 86. was right. Yes. 
which was fairly shabby. But this led to probably the worst joke that we made this year. Labour MP Chris Wan said, We're used to Tory tissues of lies. This time, it's Titians of lies. Oh. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? Do you, do you ever look at your wiki entry? I don't know. Yeah. Is my, it? Well, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't looked at it. I did occasionally glance at mine, and uh, for years I was told that uh, I was, uh, I'd auditioned to play uh, a gay character, Simon in EastEnders, but was rejected because I was too light on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, since I've mentioned it, someone's taken it off, which is a great shame. Oh, I've I didn't really. realise that you could actually go on yeah, to you you anything you like. you like. Because I haven't done one myself, but someone alerted me to the fact there was something in there about me. What did it say? Apparently, um, I'm also a member of a 1920s vocal doo wop. <laughs> 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 I was like, how old am I? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, and nicely done, Sue. What have you got for us, Larry?